Eventually, after Florida, I made it back to Portland, Oregon. Uh, I had uh, never anticipated living in Portland. It was part of my sales tour territory when I lived in San Francisco, and it was like one of my least favorite places to ever come. And so here I was sitting in Florida, the, the aluminum company I worked for got downsized by 50% and I was on the, the bottom half. Um, and I'll tell you what a good story that got me to Portland was they had called me from the company later on that evening and says, we made a mistake, we uh, let too many people go. And they wanted to hire me, you know, not let me go. And I says, well, I'll have to think on it overnight because first I'd be doing more work because they got rid of half the company and they were giving them a pay cut in order to get the company to survive. And so uh, my, my joke I tell is the Grateful Dead got me to Portland, Oregon. And so what I did was I hopped in my car and uh, I went out to uh, one of the local ice cream places and because I was trying to decide, do I go back to work or is that it? I you leave. Um, so I go and I have an ice cream and you know, as I'm fond of doing is I, I talk to God in the mirror and I say, okay, God, what do you want me to do? I need a sign. I need to, cause you know, I'm a, I'm a double Libra. My sun and moon are in Libra and that's the most indecisive combination ever. I never want to go to a Chinese restaurant with me, you know, to make a decision. So I'm thinking, oh God, what do I do? Do I take the safe bet and stay here and work harder for less money? Or do I go off into the unknown and what would that even look like? And I says, okay, God, I need a sign. So I get back into my car with my ice cream. I turn on the radio and the Grateful Dead come on immediately singing truckin'. And I thought, oh, that's the sign. I got to leave. So it was, you know, and I pay attention to signs like that. I got lots of stories on animals bringing messages and, um, you know, all, all of that is lots of stories. But, um, but, but the key was it was time to leave. And I did all my analysis, you know, my astrology power lines of, oh, I'll go live in Boulder or I'll go live in Durango or if all else fails, I'll end up back in San Francisco. Well, you know, and I did all the analysis and when I, um, if you've ever driven across the country, particularly like if you've ever driven across Kansas, you know, that's one of those places you try to get through as quick as you can, okay? Um, and when you come across Kansas from the east to the west, you'll come up and you'll see the mountains about a hundred miles out. They just pop out on a clear day. And you, it's amazing to think you can see that far. Um, and the moment I saw that, I knew I wasn't gonna live in Colorado. I mean, just instantaneously. But you couldn't have told me when I left that I wasn't gonna live in Colorado again. So I end up coming up to Portland because I have a friend in acupuncture school here. Um, my car breaks down. I had to put a $2,300 engine on a credit card. Um, and, I, and you know, you can't collect unemployment unless you have a physical address. So I had to get a physical address so I could collect unemployment so I could pay off the $2,300 credit card bill for the new engine. Uh, and in the meantime, I says, well, I'm just gonna have to do something. I go back into the corporate world again. But that was the beginning of the end because after about four years, I just couldn't stand it. I, uh, and I was making good money, uh, but I just couldn't stand it anymore. I was sneaking home to uh, take naps. You know, as an outside salesman, I could do that. Didn't work Friday afternoons ever after a period of time. I just, I, it, and I just didn't feel good about myself trying to do something just for the money. You know, my heart just wasn't in it. And I mean, it was good at it. I, you know, I did a good, a, a good job with it. Um, and then ultimately, you know, the, the, um, you reach that breaking point that you just can't do it anymore. So I wouldn't say that I became a full-time astrologer out of any desire to be a full-time astrologer. Um, it just kept coming and coming and over all those years, it was the one thing that stayed with me. Uh, even when I left, I was planning to start an import-export business, was taking classes, and I thought, well, I was able to collect unemployment when I, the job ended here in Portland. And I thought, well, you know, I'll just bump my astrology practice up from part-time to a little bit more full-time while I'm trying to figure out what to do. And gradually, you know, I'd go about all these job interviews and I'd say, I'd go home and I'd say, I can't do this anymore. I just can't do it anymore. 
uh, you know, you get to, it's not a self-hatred, but it's like, oh, I just can't be that person anymore. And, you know, the universe kept telling me because I'd tune in and it'd say, you'll be able to make it, you'll be able to make it. Well, here I am in uh, 2015 celebrating 20 years out of the corporate world. And I will tell you though, I went bank, I, I, I didn't go bankrupt, but I, I lost everything all three times I left to do this. The difference was the third time, I just couldn't stand to go back anymore. You know, and that, you, you know, and when you have no bridge behind you to go over anymore, your only way is forward. And that's, that's how it played out. Thank you for watching this cafe clip. As I mentioned in last week's podcast, we're over halfway through season one. Season two, I would like to start off with a theme in mind for all of the interviews. And I would love it if you, our audience, would come up with that theme. I've thought about things like living your dream or local entertainers, craftsmanship. These are different ideas I've had, but I'd like to hear from you. If you think you have an idea for the next season of Curmudgeon Cafe, leave a comment on this video. Let us know through Facebook or Twitter. Or go to our website. There's a suggestion page right there. Thank you for watching.